So this at at certain time t, at some instant, we know that I is five amperes, and we know that the current is changing at this rate. That is di over dt. That's a rate of change of current. Means the derivative of the current with respect to time is ten amperes per second. This is what we know. At that instant, we know that the induced EMF E is 30 millivolts. That is, it's 3, 30 times 10 to the minus 3. That is, 3 times 10 to the minus 2 volts. We have 600 turns in this coil. So we have a coil. Uh, 600 turns in the coil. What is the magnetic flux through each turn? Now, we know that here we have only one coil. There's a current in the coil. The current, of course, changes with time. It's changing with time. And so there's a flux in the coil, which is changing with time. Now, the flux, the flux is given by the self-inductance, L times I. That's a flux. Now, the induced EMF E is minus d phi over dt. So it's minus L di over dt. So L, L is just the magnitude of L. Now, the induced EMF is like 30 millivolts, but of course, it could be plus or minus. Uh, it's irrelevant. That simply tells us the direction, let's say, of the, if there's some induced current because of this back EMF. And so to get the magnitude of L, we just take the magnitude of E divided by the magnitude of di over dt. This gives us the because sometimes, many times when you say the induced EMF is 30 millivolts, it could be plus or minus. It depends on like which way you measure VA minus VB, or you measure v, VB minus VA. So in one case you get plus, in one case you get minus. To get L, you just take the absolute value of the induced EMF divided by the absolute value of di over dt. That gives you the L the inductance. Now, we're told that at some instant, the inductance is, is this. Uh, the, the induced EMF is just 30 millivolts. So at that instant, it's 3 times 10 to the minus 2. At that instant, L equals 3 times 10 to the minus 2 volts divided by di over dt, which is at that instant is 10 amperes per second, divided by 10. So this is 3 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry. That is, it's 3 milli Henry. So this is the inductance, self-inductance, at that instant. But of course, the self-inductance doesn't depend on time. Self-inductance of a coil simply depends on, again, the geometry, the radius of the coil, the number of turns per meter, and so on. It has nothing to do with time. So if I find the inductance at a given time, that's the inductance at all times. So this is the inductance of the coil. This is self-inductance of the coil, L. Now that we have L, we have the, the flux is Li. That's a total flux. But the total flux, of course, 
is the flux through each turn times the number of turns. That's the total flux. That total flux is Li. So what is a flux through each turn? It's just Li over M. Li over M. So at that instant, I equal 5. The current is 5 at that instant. So at that instant, the flux, now the flux changes because, of course, I is changing, and so the magnetic field is changing, and so the flux is changing. But at that instant, so in fact, uh, the question should maybe have stated it clearly or explicitly that what is the magnetic flux through each cent at that instant? So at that instant, so at that instant, I should say, so at that instant, I is 5. L, of course, is 3 millihenry, and N is 600. So this is 3 times 10 to the minus 3. This is L. And I, at that instant, is 5. And N is 600. So this is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And phi is, of course, Tesla meter square, or whatever. So this is the magnetic flux through each turn. I thank you for watching.